Please uh, put your hands together for Tom Yet. Just want to make sure everybody can hear me. So a nice thing about being a professor is that you actually get to ask a lot of questions that you don't even need to know the answer for. So in my talk, I'm going to ask you a lot of questions. So first, we're going to start with the game. And the question is, now you see these two pictures. How many things can you see that are different between the two? And there are actually four of them. And it's supposed to be a really fun game. You might have played it when you were a kid. How you, did you all get them? Even, can I see four of them? Oh, yeah, you guys are pretty good. These are the, so there's a, one character that's missing there, and there's a text that's been changed, a new button there, and so on and so forth. And it turns out these are the kind of things computer can do quite well. You take two pictures, and you compare them, and you take a diff, diff, you know, like a diff, but it's a visual diff. And it's not that hard to actually see, oh, these are some changes there are that actually four different things have been changed. And this kind of game that, uh, well, my son likes to play this, love to play this kind of game. So we had a little conversation that, oh, well, do you, uh, you, do you know that you can actually one day get a job playing these games all the time? He was like, really? So if what you do is you usually get to see the different uh, screens of you get to play with your phone, you look at them and doing different things. There's five different things you can do. And then some programmer is gonna come along and change some code. And then you look, you do those five things one, uh, just over again and look at the screen and just ask yourself how to play these games, say how they are different. And these kind of games you can play all the time. And so my son just said, can I have some candies? So it was a pretty short conversation. So as you can see that this is kind of games that as a, as, as a tester might have to kind of do a lot and to just check whether things are the same. In the regression testing, right, the things that not supposed to be changed should just stay the same and continue to look as the, the way it's supposed to look like. And, and it's pretty time consuming. Are they different? So okay, this is my second challenge to you. Were you able to see anything that's different? What's wrong if they are different? How many so-called test cases actually fail just because they look different? Can you see? It's pretty hard to see because the screen kind of small. Yeah, so I don't see anyone in the audience with a telescope. So it's hard to see, but it's actually there are two, in these cases two. Uh, so SQL is actually a tool that we realized, well, there's uh, some part of mobile testing, uh, even testing of graphical user interface in general, requires a lot of visual recognition that is usually performed manually by humans, but some part of it could be automated using computer vision, using machine vision, image recognition. So in this case, then we try to package it in such a tool that we hide the complexity of computer vision. You don't really want to go through the math to really try to figure this out, and, but they, they are, established technique that can do this kind of thing quite well. So we just package together and put and create this scripting tool called Securely. And you may wonder what does Securely mean? What does Securely mean? Anybody knows? Have you heard of this word Securely? You might not, but now you have. So Securely is actually in the native Indian, this means God's power to see and understand the things that's unseen and unknown. So we thought it kind of fitting because a lot of times uh, a user interface is hard to automate because they are things they are unknown, they are inaccessible, but at least we can still see it. We can still just look at it and trying to make sense out of it. And using, in this security script is a, a example of doing that sort of thing. And uh, in this case, for this verification, and then some kind of assertion statement can be made. In this case, assert exists. It basically check whether that screen that's supposed to stay the same, there can be hundreds of them. You only change one thing, but there are hundreds of, hundreds of the other things that should, supposed to stay the same, you can verify in this way, in a very convenient and automated manner. All right, any question? Okay. So 
And that is the verification side. But on the automation side, you also want to be able to interact with the user interface. A lot of times, the test case starts with step one, click on this X. And then you just either do it by hand, but you realize you do it like hundreds of times. You maybe this time to automate it. You try to write some kind of program and script to do it. And if you are a programmer, and this is the target device and app you want to test. You think about, in terms of programming, naturally you ask, well, I see that, there's an icon there, it's a which row, maybe the third or third row, which column, maybe three, and calculate the position on the screen. Maybe I can send a mouse click there, or maybe there's a component ID I can use, three, four, five. Or maybe there's a name, this is name, it's essentially Gmail, right? There's a Gmail right there, maybe I can use Gmail. It ought to be able to find it. Or you could maybe it's a label based on the label. So you think about this kind of uh, this kind of way uh, trying to programmatically control this your driver to click on it. But you think in terms of securely, and then you kind of think differently. Then you are trying to think, well, how does it look like? How does it look like to you? How does it look like to you, sir? How does it look like? And the way security script work is it, it gives you a, it's still kind of write script, but then instead of using component ID or position and so on, you actually just tell security what it's supposed to look like. Just giving security a picture. Just like when trying to find a person, a police trying to find a criminal, you show a picture of a criminal. What does it look like? And instead of describing, it's kind of hard to describe a person, right? But in this case, if it is hard to describe a particular graphically rich, component using words or using code. And maybe an option, another, so security provides alternative. The alternative that you could just use a visual language directly using the image. And you right click that picture, and that should blow out of that. So that is all you do. And it's pretty, pretty fun. And then they'll be able to actually find that icon on the user interface and click on it. So now, hopefully you have some kind of uh, basic notion of how security is supposed to work. And so this is a little quiz for you. Now we want to click on the checkbox to uncheck contact as part of your test case. And there's something wrong with this approach. If you just right click with a checkbox picture, what's wrong with this? Why would it fail? Can you see? There are two of them. Which one is going to click? First one or second one? We don't really know. Actually, we don't even know. So there's you just. So what do you think we should do? Component ID? No. Try to think of just visually. What would you do? What would you tell someone? What would you tell, if I just blindfold it? What would you tell me to click on? So the one way is that you use visual landmark. People think visually, then you just think, oh, there's a visual landmark I can actually use, meaning you try to look for contact first. Contact, something unique. But the checkbox images are not unique. You use contact, something that they can sit nearby. And what you can do next is you could use, like, right selector, kind of selector. In the, in the, in the DOM or JavaScript world, you kind of select into the hierarchy, but in this case, it's actually, it's outside the hierarchy. You select based on what you actually see on the screen. Something's above, below, it's actually above and below, and left and right. In this case, why don't we just look for context first and look at the right of that and look at the checkbox, all right? So it might work. Okay, so this is the only quiz I'm gonna give you for today. So it's, and so I just want to next, uh, move on to just give you a few case studies that how some companies and organizations use security to help them automate testing. And there's going to be three stories. First, I will take you to Harvard Medical School, which was kind of across the street when I was a PhD student. And that in the system biology lab, they are actually have some programmers working on a new visualization tool for them to visualize DNA and all these molecular structures. And they open source their software, it's great. 
and they want to make sure the software works. So they actually have, have uh, very big, rigorous tests, testing that is done. But they run into the problem of being, a, this is a really visual kind of interface. It's kind of really some, some of the things they want to test. It's hard to just code it up. Like for instance, they want to test this is green, that is red, and it look bigger and small as you zoom in and out. So it's hard for them to do it. And they came across our tool. Before they came across the tool, they, this is like 400 manual test cases had to do. It took just about five hours of labor. And according to what they told me, there's one of the reasons they couldn't have a really fast release cycle. And so they used, they used it securely and they checked, they actually wrote a bunch of scripts. This is a snapshot of what they actually put on, on their SourceForge page, all this security script they wrote to automate their test process. And it turns out they were able to double their release rate. And as a result, because they eliminate most of the majority of the five hours labor for doing their regression testing. Second story about Telenap is as a GPS app maker. And so I have conversation with some of the testing engineers there, and they told me they came across Secure and used it because they have a lot of new platform. They want to make sure all the GPS maps work on all of them. And so, sometimes a new platform came along. The mobile testing tools that native they operate in might not be available right away. And there's a little gap in between, and during those gaps, they found they can use Securely as kind of like a fallback option before they have a more mature tool. They can use Securely just, just because Securely only relies on images. They could get the image from emulator, get the image from some sort of, a v, uh, I don't know what's the technical term, so like secure shell connection, VNC, and so on, to get a screen, and you'll be able to drive the mobile apps and for testing purposes. And lastly, I want to bring you to NASA in Florida. And they use security. I was like, why do you have to use security to test a space shuttle right now? So it turns out they actually have a lot of uh, servers. They have this old, really old, they're probably too old. They have this open VNS graphical user interface. They have to still back in development, still want to test them. And they are running on this supercomputer from the 70s. And they still maintain they have to maintain them, and they want to maintain the software. So they work very closely still with their hardware part supplier to keep the machines alive. So there's their supplier they work with to get their parts. And, and so they, so Securely helps them at least deal with the software part of the thing to test it. Because all they have to do, even though the machine is too old, they can't really run native testing code on it. But they could somehow get a screen piped to, uh, through a remote desktop connection and to test it. So these are the three different cases to show how Securely kind of help the way, the reason, because it's too visual, if some interface is too visual, some mobile app too visual, maybe you can consider using image recognition approach. Too new, when there's no, just no other tool has been built yet, you could just give Securely a try, just as the first step. And if it's something too old, probably now you, no, no one here in Zuzu might run into this problem unless you want to work for NASA or government organization. But if you do, you might one day come across the coolie. So how is my time? About 10 minutes left? Two minutes, okay. I'm doing pretty well. So what's coming? So why am I doing at the University of Colorado Boulder? There I'm actually starting my, finally, I get my own research lab. I found go with my own students that I can use as Slave, I mean students. <laughs> and uh, so to work on, to just pouring more resources into a research development. So just this kind of research question is what kind of other image recognition task we might have to solve in order to support some of the really creative use of um, GUI automation for mobile testing. And we are really fascinated by some of the research questions you generate. And, but we are really not coming from the testing world, so we, but then over the years, we started to have more contact and learn a lot more. So the reason why I'm here is also be able to, to learn from you what do you think would be useful, where should we direct our resource in terms of research and development to making security as an even better tool to augment whatever you are doing. So it's not supposed to be a replacement, but it turns out a lot of people use security to augment some kind of gap in the, their testing framework. So there are a few things we do. 
So this CQ lab is, is just, the page is still kind of rudimentary, we're still working on it. But this, which, uh, this just, just gives you examples of kind of other tools people kind of try to use with Securely, and that use for Selenium, and they use for some robot framework for other kind of automation, because it could be but also um, we've seen integration into some kind of continuous uh, testing framework, continuous integration like uh, Jack and I think that's what it is, and VNC and Cucumber. And so, based, so one research direction which is trying to just continue to improve security to make it even easier to be integrated with other framework. And right now, people kind of do it in a very act hard way. We never really fully support, but somehow people figure out just the trimming down and take security. Security is kind of like Java API on top and with a Jython scripting API that was geared to an end user. But a lot, of, a lot of you, some people in the audience already use security, kind of throw sort of away the Jython. I just deal with API. But this API was never written with, for that purpose. So we're kind of trying to put in more effort to work on this API to make sure you could really work very well with other framework. And let's give you one example of the Cucumber. First time I remember hearing about somebody telling me, hey, security, it goes quite well with Cucumber. I was like, well, you think security is a salad dressing or something? Well, it's cucumber. Then they realize cucumber is actually a BDD, what's a BDD? Behavior driven development, okay. And so and it works very well, and they write some kind of uh, test cases like this to say the given blah, blah, there's a dealership that exists in the system, and when you log in, and blah, blah. But what is interesting is they, could, you could do something like a look like. This look like a notion that you could introduce once you have an image recognition ability provided by security. You can write something that looks like X. And so that's how this, then we saw this. When we saw this, I realized that's kind of integration people want. Then we really, really just want to make sure as, as security continues to improve, they can support this kind of integration to be a really useful tool to augment, to strengthen whatever testing paradigm you are doing in your company. And so another research area we're kind of looking at is that sometimes you get this test, you just kind of given a, given a interface, and you ask, what do you want me to test? They was like, nothing really, we just, why don't we just poke around, see where they can find bugs? And this kind of test, can, test cases, people come across too, and just, poke around and see whether they can discover something wrong. And pressing all the buttons, I just, it kind of like, I feel we humans are hardwired to just like to press buttons. Or sometimes press wrong button, but you just like to press button. My two years old, I give him an iPad. The iPad is kind of big, right? With all the different things you can touch. Somehow you just go straight to that little round thing. Little round button. It's only one button, but he just managed to kind of go straight right to it. Some, so, in this kind of case, the, this, we just want to be able to find all the buttons and click. And human can do it, and computer actually can do it too. And so it's kind of called a smoke testing. Have you heard of this term, smoke testing? Like you're setting all the small bombs somewhere in your house, and all the rod rodents and mice came out. But if the user interface, the same thing, you're trying to say something off, click all the buttons. So we're working on technique that you could just recognize, just give, just show me the GUI, show me a mobile app. And we'll try to recognize things that could be click. That we'll try to click for you and follow some kind of systematic test plan to explore and to see whether we can find something that's wrong for you. So there's uh, another research area I'm working on. And lastly, something that probably the craziest idea. So I give some uh, shout out to Jason. So this is actually a robot that plays, that touches the surface. So what if someone did give you a challenge? You should test this mobile app, but there's no way you can connect this film to your computer. How are you gonna test it automatically? There's no way using software unless you use physical robot. So maybe mobile testing one day, we're gonna go physical in the physical world using a robot like this. And with security, we what we want to do, maybe we could just add a camera to it, and there will, not only you will be able to touch from outside, you also see from outside. You can even test the physical buttons, not just a software button on the screen. And so there's an idea of working on, which is in the process of getting this new robot and this whole bastard 
Baxter, I mean Baxter by Think Rethink <laughs> Robots. And it was made by a uh, MIT professor. And so recently just, it's going to be, become available soon. And it's, we are quite excited because I circled this because this is ARM. The ARM actually has a camera right installed out right on the ARM. So not only you can see what is being clicked on, it's pretty much what you could need just being able to see what, uh, what is on the screen. So we thought we're going to do some experiment with it, see whether you could help. But it could be probably slow. And so this is, uh, so yeah, so these are the three different research directions. There's also some other ideas kind of cooking. So if we hope we can have some more conversation. You can inform us what do you think we should do to what, how to prioritize all these research goals. And I want to just end my presentation before I start taking questions, just showing you some of the, so did you do a Google search with Securely, and you want to find example of Securely script people wrote. And turns out you can't just use a regular Google search. You have to use a different kind of Google search. What do you think that is? Huh? Google image search, yes. Why? Because Securely has a lot of images. People realize it makes no sense to post a script without images. And the only way to share a script or post a script is just take a screenshot of the entire script with click and, and with those images. And, and we can actually find a lot of examples. You can do it on your own to see how what people wrote. All right, so I just want to take a, use the remainder of my three or four minutes to take questions from the audience if you have questions for me. Oh, so that is a very good question. So the question is that, huh? The question was how for the comparing differences and when there are two pixels that are different. And it could be just for some other artifact like different background, you still want to be the same, but it could be really different. So this threshold is something that to say if you're different by this much, it's really different. So his question is, how do we choose that threshold? So it is actually a very difficult question. We just don't, we never really know. So this threshold is how you control people ask, does Securely do fuzzy matching? Why do you need fuzzy matching? It means that if some icon looks just slightly different, we still want to be able to say they are the same. If we're too exact, it's just one pixel is different, they will be different, that's what we don't want. But it's hard to just, adjust the knob to find how fast it is. So in the Securely IDE, we have some kind of a preview. You can just test different threshold to see whether that is will give the result you want. So to answer your question, and so we'll choose, a, we'll choose a default default threshold that if you differ by this much, and it's really different. But then also give you opportunity, give you ability to make adjustment too, depending on your situation. If you really are strict, and you could say the ratio kind of high, so it really had to be this much different in order to say different. Another way is that if you only have one or two pixels, is this really different? Or you want to consider maybe a really big chunk of pixels that are different, and then it's really different. That is also another ratio. What is the smallest area of change you will consider as a change? So there's another way. So there's other parameter you might have to play with. Yes, there's another one. So maybe the biggest problem in mobile testing is the difference in screen size and screen resolution. Yes. So an absolute comparison of, uh, you know, pixel by pixel or even close, that's not going to help. So mm -hmm. I would want to be able to express some kind of scale translation, mm -hmm. maybe even a little bit of rotation invariance. Yeah. In order to use this on. So, you know, I was first, so the question, uh, people can hear it with the Initially, we put in rotation variance and in our security image recognition, meaning if your icon like look like this, if it turns this way, you can still find it. But it turns out it does, it's quite rare. We don't really see too many cases. Interfaces are like rotated 45 degrees, it's kind of weird. It, it's that, but you could rotate it 90 degrees when you turn, turn it around. And, and also about the resolution sizes, it turns out it's really not that of, of the issue because the image recognition technique turn, they come with rotation, I mean scale invariance, meaning if the image is, icons like look like this and icon look like this, exactly the same size as you see on screen, but the number of pixel count, the, deep, what is the deep DPI, is the, the density is still different, but can still be able to find it just because of the way image recognition works. I hope that answered your question. If you need more, we could have take it offline. Yes? Oh, so the question is actually if the image looks different. So if, suppose you change the theme and the color is different. So in security, it's actually the, the, they will 
pretty much won't work. You just have to take new screenshot of your new interface. Suppose you just decided to change uh, this normal this theme into some kind of pink, kind of uh, Hell Kitty-ish kind of theme, and you might have to just take a new screenshots. All right, so I think I run out of time, so I really, well, I will be make myself available to have conversation about security during the break. Thank you for paying attention to me, and I'll just give, switch to the next speaker. Yeah. All right, thank you.